today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Hans changed his name to Sexy Vegan. I got Sexy Vegan tattooed on my face. My son parades around in Speedos. He carries a full-length mirror. I am drop dead gorgeous. I am the vegan messiah. Let's see your talent. Hey, no, you need to look at me. Let's look see at me. your talent. Okay, security, get him out of here. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Susan is a proud mother of five. She says over the years, she and her family traveled all over the world, were part owners of the Chicago White Sox, and then her surgeon husband passed away. She inherited $11 million. But now Susan says she's dealing with a serious crisis because her once sweet, beautiful, lovable son, Hans, seems to have lost his grip on reality. Susan says in August of 2016, Hans legally changed his name to Sexy Vegan. <laughs> and now he walks the streets wearing nothing but a Speedo, <laughs> carries a full-length mirror wherever he goes, and refuses to abide by the rules of society. But that's not all. Susan says her son tattooed Sexy Vegan on his forehead has been arrested 15 times and refuses to get a job because he's, quote, too talented and beautiful for a nine to five. <laughs> she says her son goes by sexy, shows up two hours late to court hearings wearing spandex and tank tops, dances in the middle of crowded streets and aspires to become the first American king. But Sexy says there's nothing wrong with him, and his mom just wants him to be a Toyota when he is clearly a Ferrari. <laughs> Take a look. My name is Sexy Vegan. I got my name legally changed to Sexy Vegan. Hans no longer fits me. When people see the tattoos, they're shocked. I'm a strict vegan. I once was down to 1.3% body fat. The beautiful vegan Messiah. When I go out, everyone stares at me because I wear a Speedo-esque outfit and I'm exotic like a Lamborghini SV. I love walking around in my Speedos because putting clothes on is like putting a tarp over a Lamborghini, which makes no sense and I get for that all the time. When I go into a grocery store, I'm followed around by the security, which is so annoying. If I'm wearing my Speedo, the security will come up and they'll say, sir, you have to dress more and I'll be like, well, a hot chick could wear this outfit. I get kicked out of so many stores. I've been arrested 15 times. This last summer I was arrested for a criminal threat. I'd end up doing six months for that. My mom has spent over $80,000 on legal fees. I'm drop dead gorgeous and a great singer dancer. I can make it on my talents. I have several YouTube videos. I've been kicked off of YouTube channels. I got terminated for over sexual strikes. My main problem is my mom. She does not believe in me. She's very pessimistic. She always sees the negative. She's sadistic at times. My mom wants me to conform to society and be normal. Working nine to five and wearing a suit, and that's just not me. I'm like Charlie Sheen circa 2011. I see myself in five to 20 years getting my own reality show, segueing that into a high-ranking government position, either first American king or president. Well, Susan says she's been putting up with and funding her son's antics for years, but now all she wants is for Sexy to be a productive member of society. My son, Sexy Vegan, is not functioning in the society. If I don't hear from him every morning, I wonder if he's dead or in jail. 
My son Sexy is weird, immature, spoiled, and misunderstood. Sexy parades around in Speedos and refers to himself as the vegan messiah. He thinks he's the second coming who can change the world and no one can tell him otherwise. When I saw his tattoos, I couldn't believe it. Sexy is the most entitled person I know. He won't even try to get a job because he's the vegan messiah. <laughs> I'm tired of him using me as a personal bank. I've probably spent over $200,000 on him in the last year and a half alone. I bought him a car, gave him two of my cars, some condos, and a house. He has a debit card. Every day he calls, hey Poochie, can you put $40 on today? I am an enabler and I can't help it. Sexy does not follow the rules. He's constantly getting in trouble with the law. He's always been weird. People don't appreciate his weirdness. And then he flies off the handle. He loses his temper like a two-year-old in a 35-year-old body. He was the shyest kid ever in grade school. I don't know what happened. I have lost all hope for my son. This seems like the last effort. Okay, uh, you consider his behavior now to be outrageous. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, and you said you're an enabler, but you can't help it. Yeah. Why are we here then? What, what, do, you, what do you want me to do? You want me to help it? What, what do you want me to do? I would like him to get help. So if that happens, and then you have an enabling mother that unravels all of that, what's the point in helping him? Because if, if I was working with him, if I were to help him, the first thing I would do would be to start holding him accountable, which means, listen, everybody's different. Different strokes for different folks. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to put on a speedo and moonwalk around Beverly Hills, <laughs> and you can afford to do that, and it makes you happy, Knock yourself out. Right. Seriously. Different strokes for different folks. If you can afford it, do it. But the problem is he can't, but you make it possible. So if I got involved and held him accountable, no matter what I said or did, you would come in and undo it. No. Well, you said, I enable him and I can't help it. Well, I'm going to try to help it because I can't keep this up. Well, I don't work with triers. I work with doers. So you've got to be willing to say he's going to have to start. He's 35. This isn't a child. Right. You say he behaves like a two-year-old, but he is, and he's 35. Right. Now, a year and a half ago, his name was Hans, right? That's right. And then he changed it to Sexy Vegan. Yeah. Do you think he's mentally ill? Yes. What what do you, what do you think is? I think he has bipolar. So, he's cyclical, or he's like this all the time. He doesn't go down. Well, then he's not bipolar. Then he's unipolar. <laughs> I don't know. He's up. Okay. Right? He's up. Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. You know, I don't know him. I've never met him. So I'm asking you. Oh. He's up all the time, whatever you call that. Too okay. happy. Here are the behaviors that you've identified that you consider to be troublesome, uh -huh. problem. Uh, he calls himself uh, the vegan messiah, mm -hmm. a little grandiose. Uh, he tattooed his face and eyebrows, which is atypical. Mm -hmm. uh, he walks around in a Speedo with no shirt, which is rather exhibitionistic. Right. Okay. Uh, he carries a full-length mirror. I've looked the same since I was 12. I don't have to check. I mean, you know, I... He's been arrested 15 times, so he's coming into conflict with society. Right. So that's problematic, right? That's very problematic. Uh, he believes he's entitled to his dad's inheritance and that right. you're just keeping it from him. Yeah. Okay. He refuses to take meds because they're not vegan. Right. And he doesn't believe he's bipolar. That's right. Okay, well, he and I might agree with that. He aspires to be in the government, some kind of official first American king. Yeah. I, I didn't know we had that. <laughs> Always the first time, I guess. Yeah. I uh, he has no relationship with his siblings whatsoever. He claims they're jealous of him. That's pretty ridiculous. Right. He admits to 
past drug use, but he's sober since 2011? Right. Do you believe that he is? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sexy says he sees nothing wrong with his mother paying his rent, bailing him out whenever he gets in trouble, and giving him his father's $11 million inheritance. Now, his sister Raquel disagrees and says mom needs to cut Sexy off now. Well, we'll hear what she has to say after the break. The reason I got Sexy Vegan tattooed on my face and my chest because both are great things. I want people to know who I am instantly just looking at me. These tears right here are for the suffering of the over 70 billion animals in cages so small they cannot move. The star is superstar that I'm going to achieve and it's for pleasure. Blue eyebrows are because blue is my favorite color. It's gorgeous. My mom, she doesn't like the face tattoos. It looks like a weirdo. My goal is to break into acting and be a big movie star like Tom Cruise, but now with the face tattoos, I'm more distinct. I'm going to be myself and people have to like me for me and that's all there is to it. I'm not going to conform. Well, Raquel says her older brother, Sexy, has been banned for life from YouTube and Craigslist, thinks he's on par with God, not a God, the God, and has even tattooed his face. So who does she blame for his outrageous behavior? Well, she explains that. Take a look. For the record, I don't call my brother sexy, I call him SV. Just last year, my brother looked like this handsome guy, but when I've seen his recent transformations with sexy vegan written on his forehead, it just breaks my heart. I describe my brother as lazy, unmotivated, crazy. He's a danger to the public. My mother has two rules for my brother. Don't get arrested, don't do drugs. He can't seem to follow either of them. My mom is an enabler. I feel like he's been completely taking advantage of you and I just don't think that it's fair. If I just put him out there on the street and something happens, then I'm gonna feel guilty. My mother has spent at least $500,000 on my brother, which is completely insane. SV wrote a book, The Adventures of Fargo Lefty. You can buy it on Amazon for $10. I'm sure my mom invested a few thousand on that. He's only had two jobs. He worked for the deli. He came in drunk all the time and ended up getting fired. He worked at a retail store, took a lunch break, and never came back. My mother treats my brother like he's disabled. A lot of people have mental illness but they find a way to create a productive life. Okay, you've been listening everything so far, right? Absolutely. What, what, first off, what do you have to add or what, what, how do you react to what you've heard so far? What she's doing hasn't worked and I just feel like she just can't, in some ways she can't help it. She feels like, well, this is what I have to do, mm -hmm. you know, versus letting him learn from his mistakes and letting him learn to be an adult. You agree with what she's saying? I do. Because you say you're tired of it, right? I am tired <clears> of <throat> it. And, and here's the thing, there's something that I refer to as emotional extortion. And he can be the extortionist or you can be extorting yourself, but you're saying if something happened to him, you would feel guilty. And I hate to break this to you, yeah. but you're not in control of that. I get that. Well, then you, then you don't parent from guilt if you get that, well, then or fear. <laughs> you're, you're paying him money because you're afraid what will happen if you don't. Yeah, and he, he's, he makes me feel bad. No, no, he gives you the opportunity to feel bad. You make you feel bad. You're the only one that can do that. Oh. You choose how you feel. Okay. And you say he's doing all this for attention. Yeah. Um, he, he does have some mental problems, but I think a lot of this is a show. I think he wants my mom to feel bad because he's too lazy to get a job. Well, and y'all keep saying he has mental problems, and I, I bet you you could stop a hundred cars in Beverly Hills and say, is that guy have mental problems? They'd probably all say yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think he has some questionable judgment, mm -hmm. so... I would say that he's immature, but I think everybody has a currency, mm -hmm. right? I mean, even children have a currency, like if, if there's a certain toy they like and they have to clean up their room before they get to play with the toy, they tend to clean up their room. Mm -hmm. If they don't get the toy, if they don't, they clean up their room. If they get the toy anyway, they 
tend to not clean up their room. They just mm -hmm. play with the toy. Mm -hmm. And he has a pretty high standard of living, right? He has an apartment. He has an apartment. In, in Hollywood. West Hollywood. And he doesn't have to get up and go to work. No. And he's, he's had cars. You've given him cars. And if he gets in trouble, he has a lawyer right there. He's back and call. Bail money. He's... I bailed him out the one time because he went to, he got arrested for losing his temper basically and then he was in uh, Twin Towers for a week and he, when he called I said I'm not bailing you out and then he called the week later crying, he said he got beaten up and uh, they weren't feeding him vegan food so he wasn't eating. So of course, you know. But you, you bailed him out more than one time. You've been arrested right? 15 oh. times. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, back in Illinois, I bet they were just small oh, well, little bail yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paving the way for how bad he is yeah. today. Coming up, he, he says he's just too talented and beautiful for a regular nine to five job. And I understand there's been some drama going on with sexy. And we'll find out what's been happening when we come back. I inherited 12 million from my father. It was just like me. He thinks it's his inheritance. Sexy Vegan thinks that he was the favorite son and that when his dad passed away, he should get all the money. One time, my brother tried to sue the estate. He even used my mom's credit card to spend $3,000 to contest the will. There are portions of a $12 million inheritance that I feel I deserve now. My mom hates me because I look like my deceased dad. This is revenge towards my dad because she found out he cheated on her. And she uses his money to have power over me because she didn't have the power over him. Well, Susan says her 35-year-old son, Sexy, is constantly getting in trouble with the law. And most of the time, she bails him out. Not all the time. I mean, there, there, seriously, there have been some times where she just said, no, I'm not going to do it. One time in particular where the bail was $380,000. And she said no. But Sexy says the 15 arrests are not his fault. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. So why was he arrested at the dog pound? Take a look. I've been arrested 15 times. When he left to come out to California, I told him, when you get arrested, I'm not bailing you out. He called me a week later, and he was crying. He had gotten beaten up in jail. I felt bad, so I bailed him out. I uh, got caught with ecstasy pills. Violation of probation, assault and disorderly conduct, trespassing. He had the bright idea that he was going to go to Hollywood music producer David Geffen's house and pitch this great idea that he had. Security would not even tell him that I was there. I went back three or four times, and on the last time I got arrested. One time, I whipped it out right in front of everyone on a busy street and was arrested for public urination. My dog got away and was taken to the town. When I got there, I heard my dog barking, so I hopped the fence and tried to get my dog out. I ended up getting arrested for that. I flew to LA with $8,000 in my pocket and bailed him out, which I think in hindsight was probably not a great idea. They wouldn't let me in this bar where they've praised me before. I'm like, you, I'm gonna go in, and then they pepper spray me, and then I was arrested. This last summer, I was arrested for a criminal threat. My mom didn't bail me out. I'd end up doing six months. I was innocent of the charge. She knew I was innocent. None of these arrests were fair. The world's messed up. I didn't deserve any of that. There are some fundamental things in life that are just core values that we have to embrace. Like one is you don't reward bad behavior. Okay, if somebody's doing something as bad behavior, like he gets aggressive with people sometimes, gets in their face and yells and screams, and that's bad behavior. Mm -hmm. And he's been arrested for that and put in jail. And the problem that I have with you is you've got to recognize that for somebody to mature, they have to understand that when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. This is a big deal, so big, I've printed this up for you. When you choose the behavior, when you choose the thought, you choose the consequences. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, it is a choice. His behavior is a choice, I believe. But the point is, when you choose the behavior, you can choose, the, you can choose 
to walk around in a Speedo with a full-length mirror all day if you want to, but right. you choose the consequences that come with it. It doesn't pay very well. Right. You're making it possible for him to do it because you make it possible for him to afford it. You know why I don't do that? Because I get hungry, damn it. <laughs> You know, I'm kind of a food giant, and along about dark, I start getting hungry. He, he sees my mom as a pocketbook. He sees your Truly. mom as an ATM. Really. Yeah. And, and he so he knows I can choose this behavior because the consequence is my mother is going to make it possible for me to do this. I don't need to get a job because my mother will pay me to not have a job. My mother will give me a car because I don't have a job to earn a car. And you say, well, you know, I'm afraid if he goes to jail, he'll get beat up. Well, then he'll quit going to jail. <laughs> right? We'll see. Well, I what, mean, well, well, what I you're get the doing feeling, isn't working. He's been to, you. I get the feeling he can't help himself. Well, what you're doing, he's been to jail. He's been arrested 15 times. Yeah. So we need to fire you. <laughs> And no, I'm yeah. not doing it. You don't want to come talk to Dr. Phil? Not. What? what yeah. This is so <laughs> stupid. This is so retarded. I'm the one that's liberating over 70 billion animals in cages so small they cannot move. I'm the guy that can dance like Michael Jackson. So you can go out there and you can get that message clear to Dr. Phil. Yeah. I'm not going out. So you don't want to go out even I'm if not you going have out. your mirror. It's done. It's over. You can bring the mirror. I can hold the mirror and walk out with it. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, we were ready for him to come out, but he's been listening to the show, of course, because I, nothing to hide, I want him to hear everything. Something you said apparently upset him, so he took off running, uh, but now he's back. He said now he's nervous, so he has to bring out his mirror, so he'll be more comfortable. That's fine, I, that's okay with me, I don't care. I'll check myself out. <laughs> and, uh, see how I'm looking. See what my, see what my hair's on. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's basically just kind of creating some melodrama because this is a this is a big platform for him. This is a this is a number one show on television. This is this is his platform. You know, so, you made a list of him. Let's make. Let's look, take a look at you. You've bailed him out of jail 15 <laughs> times. You spent a hundred thousand dollars in legal and lawyer fees. Now, one number is eighty thousand. Another number is eighty. I'm rounding off. It could be eighty or a hundred. You spent two hundred thousand out of eleven million inheritance in two years. You've used the inheritance to set up business ventures. You set him up a dating website. He set up the website, and then he said he want. He just wanted to do some Google ads and at the Tribune and just some ads right. and, and I actually thought because he was actually pretty good for a couple years right. mm -hmm. and I thought you know maybe he is could do this in a business because he wasn't really bad like he is now okay and so I you know he talked me into you it. you give credit card access and extra spending money you spent a hundred thousand on Google ads as you just said you've purchased three condos and a house okay we have other pictures the current condo inside. Here we go. This is, this is what your money is, is going for. Is it seem like a good investment? Not really. No. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. Yeah, I mean, he's in the process of being evicted now. I mean, they're trying to get him out. Yeah. Uh, you, you've rented two apartments in LA, paid $2,000 in rent, you bought two cars, you don't require him to get a job, and he doesn't want family talking, you don't want family talking bad about him. Okay, I, I'm all right with that, so you don't want family talking bad about him. But this has led to where we are now, mm -hmm. okay? So when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. This is your behavior, and what you have now 
are the consequences. So can we agree that what you're doing is not working? It's not working. I know it's not working. Your enthusiasm is underwhelming. It's not working. It's not working. And it's just... Because he has I'm no accountability. Well, of course not. You, know? so... you, you choose a behavior, you choose the consequences, unless mm -hmm. you don't. And that's called not being accountable. Yeah. You choose the yeah. consequences, because then you pay bailed it. Out. But when you choose a behavior yeah. and there are no consequences, then... <sighs> He's thinking, why not? This is pretty cushy. Yeah. $2,000 has a really nice you know, place to stay. And I think for my mom, not wanting him on the streets, but does that mean that he has to stay in West Hollywood and be supported in one of the most expensive places to live? on my mom's dime. All right, up next, Sexy has said that he has six small and two full-length mirrors in his apartment. In fact, he never leaves home without one. Uh, maybe he'll come out and talk to us. Maybe he won't. I really don't care one way or the other. This train, this train is moving on. If he jumps on board, he does. If he doesn't, we're moving on. We'll be right back. People lie and say I'm grotesquely ugly. And so I'll carry on the mirror with me, so I'll look and see that I am drop dead gorgeous. My image is very important to me. I look at my collection of mirrors all the time to study myself and my beauty. When I dance in front of the mirror, I can create a really striking image. Skinny with a big butt. I got junk in my trunk, but I'm keeping it. The mirrors go with me wherever I go because I want to know what I look like. I hang out where the celebrities go and with my mirror and party. People say that I'm narcissistic because I carry on a mirror wherever I go, but I don't care because I'm not, because I have empathy. And I'm currently banned from the Beverly Hills Library for bringing the mirror in, but I'm looking to get that resolved. The negative reaction does hurt me sometimes, and it's just really confusing. Because I look in the mirror, I look drop dead gorgeous. So I don't know why I'm so rejected so much. It's confusing. I don't, you know, I don't get it. You won't call till you get to water. I am the beautiful vegan messiah. Get you that water, okay? It's a song. I didn't say I was, and she knows it. I was just like my dad, okay? Ten luxury cars. My dad told me I had the same name as him until I legally changed it. My mom did not bail me out of jail when she knew I was innocent. I'm liberating over 70 billion pigs in cages so small that cannot move for years, okay? I work. My mom's a sociopathic piece of I have the highest score in Hot or Not history. I got 9.9 out of 10 after 327 women rated me. Let's see your talent. Let's see your talent, you ugly piece of Okay, stop. Hey, hey, look at me. Let's look see at your me. talent. No, huh? hey, hey, hey. No, you need to look at me. I don't have to do Okay, take okay. them out. Security, get them out of here. Thank God. Thank God. No, you are going to come out here and use that kind of language in front of my audience. And audience, I apologize. That is childish awesome. and immature behavior. And uh, now I get to leave. Yes, you do. No. Don't it's, let the door hit you in the ass. Right. <laughs> okay. That's. Um, that's your first lesson in accountability. He does not come out here and behave in a disrespectful way. He does not come out here and insult this audience. That's exactly what he's done in the lobby of two or three apartment buildings that he's been in, that they've called the police, that they've evicted him from, arrested him. He's gotten in women's faces yelling and screaming and threatening them. It, it's just that behavior right there. and. You want to know what that behavior, how I would describe that behavior? Childish. It's very entitled. Disrespectful and entitled. It's very entitled <laughs> and it's very childish. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's immature. You know, one of the things about maturity is we learn that you don't just get to do what you want to do, you do things that you need to do then you do things you want to do. I wanted to come talk to you because you seem like a very nice lady that's getting taken advantage of. So I'm here because I want to be. 
to talk to you, and I don't want you to continue to be taken advantage of by this young man. I want you to love him. I want you to nurture him. And I want you to continue to support constructive behavior on his part. If you think that he is a danger to himself or others, then I want you to do what is called a 5150, where you can call a mobile psychiatric unit and you can have him picked up and put into a psychiatric hold where he's evaluated and they can determine if he's a danger to himself or others. Now, what I'm prepared to do with him is to do that on a voluntary basis, uh, to find out what really is going on with him. Um, he's behaving in a pretty erratic way, and I have some theories as to why. And we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, I wanna tell you why I think he's doing what he's doing and what I think needs to happen to change that, and what I think, what role I think the two of you can play in that whole unfolding. We'll be right back. Okay. Let's talk about why he's, he's doing what he's doing. And you have to understand, I'm kind of label averse. So when you say uh, bipolar or OCD, um, I'm kind of label averse, and we really have these labels for insurance purposes. Psychiatrists have to put a label so they can turn it in for insurance, and so we tend to kind of cram people into mm -hmm. uh, a certain category because you got to write something down, and sometimes it doesn't really fit. You just have to pick a, a best fit. Mm -hmm. Does he show some obsessive thought? and some compulsive behaviors. Uh, based on the history y'all have given me, intermittently he does, so that, and, and those are anxiety-based behaviors. So there's probably an anxiety component going on with him. <laughs> so we need to forget about labels. Sure. I always look and say whether something is normal or abnormal, I say it's abnormal if it's interfering with the person's life and the pursuit of healthy goals. If it is, it's abnormal. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not, we just call it charming. You know, because really right. some people are kind of quirky, but if it doesn't interfere with their pursuit of their goals sure. and their, their happiness, then we just call it charming. Uh, you know, here's the definition that I have normal does not interfere with healthy functioning and pursuit of goals. Abnormal interferes with healthy functioning and pursuit of goals. And what he's doing is abnormal, right? It interferes. He's, there's not healthy goals here. Right. He's not a contributing member of society at this okay. point. So, mm -hmm. and I think he's very intelligent. I think he's, he's a very good looking guy. You know, I do, I do. I think he's a, he's a handsome young man. I think he's intelligent. So, I mean, he has a lot of assets that are going for him, but, but he's, he's doing some things that are, are, are disruptive. I can tell you this, the contribution that you can make is to stop making it possible for him to behave in an abnormal way. Because if you don't fund him, then I think old sayings get to be old sayings because they're profound. And, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. If he needs a job, he might find a way to get a job. And to keep it. Yeah, and to hang on to some way to get by in the world. and. Um, you know, he says, you're just keeping his money from him. If his dad meant for him to have that $11 million, I'm a dad. I know how to write that down. He could have left that money to him. <laughs> and, he, and he did not. That's right. Okay, I'm back with Susan and her daughter, Raquel. And we're here talking about a 35-year-old son, uh, Hans, who recently changed his name to Sexy Vegan, 
and has some pretty um, attention-getting behavior uh, that he exhibits around his neighborhood, wherever that might be. And I can't diagnose him. I've never even met him. And I, I wouldn't diagnose him if I talked to him here because to properly diagnose somebody, you need to do a multifaceted evaluation. And that's where I would start with him. I, my plan was to send him to uh, what I think is the top diagnostic center in America, the PNP Center, where they could look at him biochemically, hormonally, uh, do a brain scan, do a psychological evaluation, find out everything that's going on with him so we know where we're starting. Because uh -huh. if you ask me, you know, how do I get to Third and Elm? The first thing I'm gonna ask you is, well, where are you? <laughs> so if you say, how do I get to healthy? I'm gonna say, well, where are you? Uh -huh. I, I gotta find out w what's not right with you. So I would wanna do a very thorough evaluation um, with him. Uh -huh. Uh, what he's showing behaviorally on the short list I would I can't diagnose him but on the short list of considerations would be narcissistic personality mm -hmm. um, I mean look at the conditions a pattern of grandiosity and fantasy or behavior need for admiration a lack of empathy with other people mm -hmm. grandiose sense of self-importance and entitlement he wants to be king Mm -hmm. uh, preoccupied with fantasies, a belief of being special and unique, exploitive, arrogant, lacks empathy, envious of others, or believe others are envious of him. I mean, mm -hmm. that he kind of, <laughs> you know, that's mm -hmm. pretty much a one for one for one for one for one. Uh, but that could be secondary to other things. I don't know. But mm -hmm. uh, the problem with personality disorders is the person that is afflicted thinks it works for them. Mm -hmm. So they're very difficult to change. He needs to be evaluated, and you're going to have an opportunity to talk to him. If he starts yelling at you, you need to hang up the phone or walk away. Okay. Do not allow yourself to be on the receiving end of abuse. Mm -hmm. He needs to learn, if I'm going to talk to my mother, I'm going to do so respectfully, or all of a sudden I'm talking to a dead phone, uh -huh. yep. or she's not there. Um, and if he wants to participate, in really getting a, a thorough and professional evaluation, then I will extend that to you so we can find out where he is and what's going on. And I think you need some support in knowing where to draw the line and how to draw the line in a way that is not mean or unkind. And I would very much like to help you by getting you someone to walk this walk with you, some professional help that will be a sounding board for you so you know where to draw that line and and feel good about it because you deserve better than what you're getting will you take that help okay yeah. are you glad you came yeah okay all right thanks so much I want to thank all of my guests today and a special thanks to the p and p center for offering to really do a thorough and multifaceted evaluation for sexy. Uh, log on to drphil.com. Share your thoughts on our message boards. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time. interested in offering you some help. Absolutely um, not interested. I mean, I don't care. I'll, I'll blow up a different way. Marlon Brando turned down the studio a bunch of times. I don't need you guys. Uh, I'll leave you with this. If you're not... I don't give a get up. Get out my face. That's it, huh? Get out my face. Bye.